Well, we're back at my house, and if you remember last time, I moved this electrical switch and I ripped off this casing. Well, I just finished ripping off this baseboard, and I'm gonna upgrade this trim right here. And then I'm, what I'm eventually gonna do is put a Wayne's coating right here. But I'm, what I got for you today is something I've been wanting to share for a while, something I've always thought about since I started doing trim. And that's how you can update your baseboard to casing transitions. Now, one thing that's pretty common is just having your casing run up the side of the door frame, just typical, and then having your baseboard butt up to that casing. Now, this looks fine. Like this is a really simple look. This is just a one by four and then a one by six. This is like a real classic, just simple look. Very old school because this was simple back in the day. Now, even with this simple construction of a casing and a baseboard, there's ways you can step this up a little bit. And that's what I'm gonna show you in this video. Just using these basic materials, you can make really awesome transitions where the baseboard and the casing meet. But before I get started showing you those transitions, I'll show you a little tip that I use whenever I'm installing casing and baseboard that's a one by material. So this is true three quarter inch. What I'll actually do is I'll take the baseboard. This is just samples, obviously, but if you can imagine if this was long and then I'll put two pocket holes in the back of it. And I like to space those out kind of evenly. And my pocket hole um, jig right here is kind of broken, so I just move it around. And what that'll leave me with is two pocket holes. And yes, I'm getting the floor dusty, but it's my house, so I'm not worried about it. So that'll give me those two pocket holes. I mean, if you can imagine if this was the baseboard, I would just pocket hole that into that. And the reason I do that is because I don't like messing around. I don't know if you could zoom in on that and see that, but these things usually almost never line up straight. You always gotta like shim it out and do some weird stuff. I don't like that, how you can feel that ridge right there. I'm not a fan of that. So when I put these together, it should be really flush. Where are my screws at? Let's talk now about the baseboard to casing transitions. That's what this video is about. So, Here's a couple ways you can do this. So this is just a classic look. You can imagine this as, you know, any typical, you know, builder grade casing or builder grade baseboard. It's gonna be this butt joint right here. So what I've always thought of, and now that this is, I'm doing it to my own house, I'm going to do this, I'm gonna spice it up a little bit. Here's a couple of options you could do. The first thing I'll show you is using a PM base cap. So this is your typical base cap and this is that base cap right here. This is PM5, and you've probably seen it like this before. Just a base cap stacked up and butted against the casing. But what you could do with that, if you're using this one by construction, you could wrap that around, put a 45 there, and then drop another 45 and go all the way around the whole door frame. And that you just, I mean, to me, just looking at that, that looks awesome. Now, if you wanted to go even bigger on it, what you could do is scoot this whole thing over. You saw that I scooted this away from the, from the door uh, frame here. So if I scooch that over, then I could actually incorporate another PM5 right in here, just like that. And that is, I don't know about you, but that 
is awesome to me. And you still got room if you want to do your shoe molding, which a lot of people aren't fans of shoe molding, but I actually like it. I'm one of the few people that, that actually like a shoe molding. I feel like it gives it a little bit more depth and it's a more of a build up, a gradual build up. So I'm one of those that like shoe molding, one of the few. <laughs> so this is PM5. Another thing you could do is, and really what you could do with trim is really up to your own imagination. It's really endless. This is an outside corner. This is used on the edges of wainscotings. Um, this is used to hide seams on outside corners. This is also used for protection to high traffic areas so they won't get damaged. You could drop this on there and that's gonna wrap, wrap around the whole uh, one by and give you even more of a nice effect. So this would just drop in like that and you can see how nice that looks. You could also wrap it on this side too, but I don't have another piece of scrap right here or I would show you. So this example, we would scoot back to the door frame just like a normal casing and just boom, go all the way around our door. So now that's, another, that's one option. Another option and the option I think I'm gonna choose for this house is using the PM or PM2 or PM6, wherever this thing has a few names. Usually it's PM6. Um, you could do the same thing. You could wrap it this way, have that 45. And I like this one because it goes out and it comes over. So you get both. And this one's the biggest one of the bunch. And I could drop that 45 in there. And then you see just how big and much more of a statement that makes. And then I'll actually scoot this one over and this will fit right in here like that. So there's three awesome ways you could just make your baseboard to casing transitions, just stepping up your trim game right there in your house. And this, if you do this to your whole house, it'll feel like a whole new house. And to me, this looks awesome. I see the builder grade stuff all day long and I'm always thinking like, why? Why do they do it? But I know why they do it. They're just wanting to save money. So <laughs> let's be real. But if, since this is my house, what I'm gonna do is probably this option, but I'm gonna have a full wainscoting wall right here. I'm not gonna have this baseboard. And in that case, what I could do, or what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use that if you can imagine this as the wainscoting and the casing came down, it would be the same thing. Like if that was the top of my wainscot and the casing came up, it would still wrap around it the same way. It would just end right here. And then this other piece would continue down the length of that. So like I said, I mean, the, the options are really limited to your mind and what you've seen. So I hope you enjoyed this video. That's three ways, three awesome ways that you can update and make your baseboard to casing transitions really pop. I'll see you guys next time.